how to have great married sex without whips, chains, threesomes, or an affair. Desire comes and goes in any relationship. Sometimes you feel it, sometimes you don't. When you don't feel desire, that can be a little scary. Here's how to get yourself back on track. Number one, don't panic. Your erotic mind has its own rhythms. You can't just expect it to show up for work every day. It's not like that. Number two, don't waste your time, your energy, or your money trying to bring desire back. I know this is different from what you've been told. There's lots of advice out there about how to reawaken desire, right? Usually by trying something new, some new sex technique, sex toys, sexy dates and destinations, some variety of novelty or adventure. Novelty and adventure are consumer society's answer to erotic boredom. The problem is they don't work. Fifty Shades of Grey sold 100 million copies, and it got a lot of women very excited for a week and a half. Then things went back to normal. It was like a child's Christmas present that gets played with for a few days and then thrown in the corner. So, what's the alternative? That brings me to the last of the three things you should remember if you want to stay erotically happy in a marriage. Number three. You can't control desire, but you can cultivate the conditions where desire is likely to thrive. What are those conditions? Well, yours might be different from someone else's, but I think for most people, they involve feeling accepted, feeling free to feel whatever you feel, and taking responsibility for what you actually want in bed rather than just going through the motions of what you think is supposed to happen. If you're like most people, that's where desire is really going to thrive. I'm Dr. Steven Snyder. If you'd like to know more about how to keep sex and relationships together, check out my new book, How to Have Ridiculously Great Sex in a Long-Lasting Relationship, available wherever books are sold. And be sure to join me at loveworthmaking.com.